It was Christmas Eve, my favorite time of year. Cold and damp outside, Christmas music playing in the background and the fire lit and crackling to warm the house. Then, I heard something coming from the living room. It sounded like someone crying hysterically. I quickly raced down the hallway and into the room to see my mom with her head in her hands, sobbing. What has happened? I asked. My mom wiped her tears away and tried to look as if everything was okay and said, Darling, please sit down. I sat nervously into the corner chair. What could have happened? I could tell from the look on her face it was something serious, and already my emotions started running wild. Darling, I have been diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Those words sucked me back and froze me to the chair. The more time my mind had to process what I had just been told, the more upset I became. Terminal lung cancer? How is that possible? I said quietly. Mom was healthy, active, and would do anything for anyone. When it sank in, I quickly stood up and went over to where my mom was sitting and hugged her tight. That Christmas was hard. A time that was supposed to be full of happiness, taken away from us by the dark cloud of cancer looming over us. Our whole family was devastated. For someone so selfless and caring to get such an awful thing like this, no one could believe it. We had a few months after Christmas to really get our heads around it before mom began her chemotherapy. I was scared for her. The thought of her becoming sick or losing her hair terrified me. But I knew if I felt this scared, my mom must feel even worse. A couple months had passed and my mom had been out for her first session of chemo. I sat there, waiting in that same chair where it all began to hear the door click open and my mom to walk in. I didn't know what to expect. Would she already be losing hair? Would she be sick? The wait seemed to go on forever. Then she arrived home, and to our surprise, she seemed fine. She was running about, washing all the clothes, and feeding the animals. It was like nothing was the matter. At one point, we even had to tell her to slow down and take a rest. Unfortunately, a few days later, she took a sudden turn for the worse. She began complaining of throat pains until she was eventually rushed to the hospital where the doctors diagnosed her with tonsillitis and said it was probably due to her immune system being low from the chemotherapy. My mom had to stay there for a week, hooked up to machines and getting tests done to make sure that her immune system would fight off the tonsillitis before being able to come home again. It seemed like she had only been home five minutes when in the early hours of the morning, I woke up with a jump and my heart racing thinking I was having a nightmare, only to realize the loud noises were real and they were coming from my mom's room. My mom was panicking, breathless and complaining about pains in her chest. I stood there in the doorway, terrified about what was happening. My mom was struggling to speak, but between her breaths, I knew she was asking for an ambulance. I ran to the phone, almost falling as I rushed down the stairs and called for the ambulance. When we got to the hospital, her breathing was really bad. I remember her turning to me and saying, I feel really sick. Instantly, as soon as those words left her mouth, she started shaking and then collapsed on the floor in front of me. This really scared me as I honestly thought she had died. The following day, we got told she had pneumonia in her lung and sepsis. I wasn't sure what this was at first, but the doctors told us it was where a bacterial infection reaches your blood. It seemed she caught it once again due to the chemo lowering her immune system and making her vulnerable to other diseases. We sat around my mom holding her hands when a doctor entered the room and asked to speak with us. I could tell by the look in his face that something was wrong. He then started using terms I wasn't familiar with, but then he said some words that really hit me hard. You have a 5% chance of survival. All of my family were crushed. We all thought she wasn't going to make it. She had gotten sick so quickly, I just couldn't believe it. Only two weeks ago, she was rushing around as if nothing had happened. And now, she lay there in a hospital bed, not able to talk or breathe without oxygen tanks. Seeing her this way was the hardest thing I have ever seen, and seeing my family so broken just made it worse. Me and my brother sat by her side every day, bringing her clothes or playing her favorite music to help her calm down a little. 
The room felt dark and cold as we stood around her bed. No one knew what to say to each other. I just knew that if she could speak, she would be telling us how everything was going to be okay and we have to stay positive. But seeing my mom in this way and listening to what the doctors had said, staying positive was hard. At one point, I heard the doctors speaking with my aunt. He told her that they had now done all they could, and it was now up to my mom's body to fight off the diseases. At first, time felt like it was at a standstill. Every day we would sit with my mom, willing her to get better, but the waiting and the not knowing was really hurting us all. Then, as the days passed, I noticed something. Every time we entered the room and all looked towards my mom, she would be sitting up further in her bed, until one day we walked into the room and I saw something I hadn't seen for a long time. A smile coming from my mom and her sitting upright. I couldn't believe what we were seeing. After a few weeks in the hospital, miraculously, my mom had beaten all of the odds and started to feel better, until one day, we were in her room and the doctors came in for what we thought was her daily afternoon checkup. Then, to our surprise, he says, We have some great news for you. You will be able to go home. It felt like the whole room lit up with sunshine from the window as he said it. It was a miracle. The looks on all of our faces said it all. Relief, excitement, happiness. The brilliant doctors, nurses, and medicines had given us a second chance at living our lives together. Sometimes, terrible things happen to the best of people. When we heard my mom had a 5% chance of survival, we all thought the worst at first. Watching my mom go through all of this, and the positivity she has kept throughout, has taught me that you have to stay positive and keep believing it is possible to get through even the hardest times life throws at you.